Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. My name is Hannah Orth, and I work with Springfield Community Gardens. We're a nonprofit based in Springfield, Missouri, whose vision is a community where everyone has access to healthy and local food. We currently operate 17 community gardens, three urban farms, a commercial test kitchen, and a community food forest. This part one workshop on leveraging AI for your food business is generously funded by the USDA Agricultural Marketing Service via the Heartland Regional Food Business Center. Um, just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions throughout the workshop, please ask as we go. There is a Q&A button as well as a chat feature at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to type your questions into the Q&A section so that we may answer them as we go along. Try to use the chat features for comments only. Um, that way we can keep track of the questions throughout the night. Uh, also, once you leave this workshop, a screen will pop up with a link to a post workshop survey. This survey is used in Springfield Community Gardens reporting to the USDA and also helps us provide meaningful workshops in the future. Um, we would appreciate it if you would take a, a few minutes to fill out that after this workshop. Um, if you would like to refer to this workshop later, it will be available on Springfield Community Gardens Agricultural Workshop Playlist on our YouTube by the end of the week. I'll put that link as well as our website and social media links um, in tonight's exit survey in the chat in just a moment. Um, but that's it from me. Thank you all again for being here this morning. Um, and now I'm going to hand it off to Rachel. Hey there. So uh, do we have other folks on here with us that are able to ask questions? Yeah, yeah. we have seven attendees right now. Okay. So um, hi guys. If uh, you are new to AI, um, I hope that today I'll be able to answer some questions. There have been a lot of concerns over a lot of my coworkers with my almost um, overly excitement um, uh, with discovering this uh, really cool tool. I almost feel like discovering AI and opening that door is kind of like the first time that you ever discover that there was a Google website that just had a an open area where you could write any kind of question and then be able to get internet links out of it. We had been using Yahoo and other ways, and those search links didn't have the type of driven information that Google gave us. And so then fast forward to five years ago, 10 years ago, I don't know, I'm old. And so time just lapses together. And I know that a few of you just rolled your eyes, but I swear I'm 40. Um, and so we had Alexa that came out and everybody had an Alexa in their house. Everybody was ordering them. They were able to play music. They were able to say, hey, Alexa, give me a recipe for this. Or, hey, Alexa, tell me what weather is. And so that was the start of, H of AI. And so with what we're going to talk about today, uh, chat GPT specifically today, um, I want you guys to think of that as just another window from Siri or Alexa into a very smart device that can almost talk back. So if you had a secretary that was free, like <laughs> I feel as a mother sometimes. And so um, with, with AI, uh, you can do all types of thing from customer service to uh, developing letters, social media posts, um, anything that is an automated input. And so um, if you are looking to develop recipes from something that you have in your garden, for instance, you have an abundance of summer squash, just how you would be able to say, hey, Alexa, give me a recipe for this. Instead, you can ask chat GPT to give you several squash recipes with this amount of herbs that are three ingredients or less, and it'll give you all of the, the rundown and it'll break it all up in about three minutes and you don't have to go to a website. It's just text to text, so very easy. You can also input a letter, say you're a farmer and you're about to send a letter for to the bank. You can enter that letter and you can say proofread this or ask me questions about this um, to prep yourself for an interview. On the way down here, I uh, was using the microphone feature on chat GPT for being able to talk to it back and forth with ideas like it was uh, uh, either living secretary or almost therapist, if you will. 
um, about branding and social media. And so today I will start, um, I'm gonna screen share and I will show you, I'm gonna scroll through a document because nobody wants to sit here on a workshop and just be read to. And so I'm gonna start screen sharing and I will show you a document that I'm gonna have shared here in the chat that Hannah will link for you guys. Oop, my um, button moved up, there we go. All righty. So right here on this sheet that we're gonna um, include for you, I have um, the definition of what is AI. Um, and so basically it uh, breaks out into, it involves, it helps learn tasks and then can decipher information. And so think of it as an intelligible, an intelligible, I can't even say the word, intelligent, um, system that you can feed information to and it can uh, remember information that you gave it and then ask questions or add to as well as something that can recite information you can ask it about theories and so here in a little bit I'll open my uh, my chat screen and I'll show you guys the differences in some of the prompts but it has learning patterns is what I wanted to basically get around and so that's one of the fears as well as one of the the good things is that if you utilize uh, this technology and you're feeding information, it's just going to become smarter and be able to um, give better uh, answers. And so, uh, and that's just due to the algorithms, which we're all familiar with if we've used um, Google or Siri or Alexa before. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go fast to page two, and then this is how you can use it. And so this is very, very broad brush right now because I wasn't sure if it was just community gardeners. We could have homeschoolers. I could have a small business of somebody who's wanting to make tea and spices. This is not for one particular type of person. This technology can be used in your home, your kitchen. My kids are already using it. Um, we do goofy stories. So they're on line one, tell me a story about. Um, you can ask chat to give you a story about a woman who owns a garden, who picks cucumbers and makes pickles and has something exciting to happen. And it can write an entire story. That story you could read aloud to your kids, or you could even use it for social media or storytelling through a recipe that you had. Um, they explain the concept of, you can ask it, um, which I'll do here in a little bit, explain the concept of organic gardening or explain a contrast of natural grown versus um, organically grown. And so you can be in a grocery store and ask these questions, or you could use it to be able to explain to somebody what you're doing with your business. Um, I've used it in storytelling. And so I can uh, not only create social media posts, uh, you can give it parameters and it can write up a story or it can turn something into an image, which we'll be talking about tomorrow. So as far as an image, you can say, give me um, a description of a photo of community gardeners having a tea party. And then it could do that for you where you could put that into another thing. And so we'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. But the main thing I want you to understand is that it's not just storytelling or letter writing. It's pretty much anything that you could imagine a text prompt being able to do from being your secretary to setting a reminder, um, a very, very evolved Alexa, if you will. When I gave it the prompt of giving me a few recipes for kale, onions, and squash, this is just six, but it gave me 14 different recipes. Each one of those, I could uh, then ask it to expand or give me health benefits or nutrition of. And so this would be a way that if you are somebody who's wanting to post more frequently about your business, whether it's candles or squash, I, anything, you can give it parameters, just like give me five different ways that people can have candle lighting ceremonies using herbs. And you can um, then utilize those things to help yourself move very, very quickly through getting 30 posts over the week done for your followers and being able to give them really good content. 
I would uh, I would like to expand on making sure that it seems like it's human content because we're all going to get washed with so much information here soon. If you are a gardener interested, um, these are other tips that I have. I won't read through them all because, again, you're going to have this link and you guys can go back through these later and play with it. But um, you can ask it to offer advice on specific pests that you have in your garden or uh, theories around row covers or uh, what is the best thing to plant in April in Missouri, just about anything. And it can work on planting charts and things like that. And so, for instance, if you want to plant carrots, tomatoes, green beans, squash in your garden and you live in the Ozarks, you can give it which zone you're in and it will work up a planting chart without you having to think. You can even give it the months that you want to harvest certain things and it will back up and do a reverse planting chart for you. Um, with you can even ask it how to uh, where where to plant certain things like for companion planting or other things like that. Um, do we have any questions so far with uh, just the overview of AI so far? Uh, we don't currently have any questions, um, but I do want to say that initially at the beginning of this Zoom uh, call, they the uh, chat was adjusted so that folks could not comment, but I made that adjustment so now folks can comment. Um, so please do, if you have any questions, we would love your questions. And also feel free to use the Q&A um, if need be. So if you don't currently have a chat GPT, downloaded on your phone. Um, I think that it would be really good for you guys to just take like two minutes to open the app on your phone and download it because uh, we'll take an intermission um, probably around like 1045 where I would like you guys to kind of look at it and ask it a few questions and then be able to ask me. I've been playing with this for uh, a few weeks now um, almost every day with different types of prompts. And I can tell you that the more specific you are, the better your outcomes will be. So if you just type in here, I'll give you, I'll, I'll show you, I'll, I've got my screen sharing. So is the app literally called chat GPT? Mm -hmm. So if you look right here in this top left corner, right here, chat mm -hmm. GPT. And this is a free if you go to Google and you type in uh, chat GPT, it'll open. It's a chat open AI is what it's called on um, on the actual website on my computer. But if you are on the app, it's chat GPT. G -P -T. Sorry, I'm a little dyslexic sometimes. And so if you just type in here. If you just type in organic gardening, you'll see. It'll just basically give you a really short, broad overview. And you see how fast that goes, guys. I'm trying to decide where I want that. Can you guys see that as I'm moving that around? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can see my mute. I don't know where to put it. I, I believe okay. so. So here you can see that I just typed in organic gardening. That was the only input that I gave it was just two words. This is what it's able to come up and give me. And it's basically just an overview. But if I'm actually wanting to learn about it and have it explained to me, I can say explain So, so let's go middle school. And so if I'm a middle schooler and I want it to explain organic gardening, then now this, and so the difference, the reason I like to say explain to me as if I am is because on my actual cell phone, um, which let me open it and try to show you guys here since I've got a camera. There is a little bitty microphone in this far right corner, and I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we can see it. Oh, there we go. There we go. There there we go. So if you're in the car and you're, you know how a Siri won't work if you're driving. Now, I don't recommend you guys to do this when you're driving. Have your passenger hit the, hit the uh, microphone button. But if you hit this microphone button and you say it that way, 
it will read aloud and allow you to have a conversation without you ever touching it again. Like you can answer back and forth as if there's a person in the car or in the room with you. It can be sitting on the counter once that feature is enabled. And so it reads it aloud as if there's actually a person versus Google. So if you compare those first two, Oh, it was very in text, sustainable. Like if you were reading a bulletin board versus imagine your garden soil is like a bed for your plants to make it comfy. We want to use things like compost, which is a cozy blanket for the soil. So it just uses more descriptive terms. Mm -hmm. So when you go from those more descriptive terms, it, it almost is easier for you to read it or have somebody reading it to you for you to under, uh, understand and explain, as well as you can ask it to take that without... Without me having to give it all of the information I already gave it, I can, oh. just, I can you turn that into a script. So right. now for my kids club, I have the fantastic world of organic gardening, an opening scene, a colorful gardening with smiling plants and friendly bugs. And so I can turn that now into a play. I could turn that into using a different, I could turn that into using my AI and video. I can copy and paste that which we'll show tomorrow uh, where I can make that into short animated videos. And wow. so the, the cool thing with that is being able to give it the same as you guys can see from organic gardening to tell me like I'm a middle schooler versus can you turn this into a script? That same information was inverted within what we've been talking on this one subject for five minutes. And you've got a host and you've got all of the different little things that go. And so as somebody who has um, a, a garden or a business or a farm, I'm, I don't know all of the people who are here with us today. If you guys could write over in the chat what type of industry you're in, I could also uh, feed it very uh, industry specific prompts to show you the capabilities because um, it's not just about giving you text information, you can talk to it uh, using the voice prompt. Now, I don't have that on my laptop right here uh, with you guys, but if I was to use my voice prompt on my phone or here without it being all on live, um, you can talk to it and say, okay, I'm going to describe, I need to do a few employee reviews. And so let's just make up a name, April Jackson. April Jackson is a great employee. She shows up on time. She's always, always punctual. She um, has a really hard time working with our elderly neighbors, but she shines working with kids, blah, 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 blah. You can go on into an entire thing and it will give you bulleted points on ways that this person can improve their performance, ways that they could, um, that they're shining and then an overall score. Um, and then you can say, now I'm going to compare and contrast three different vegetables that I grew last year. I loved growing kohlrabi. Um, it was a really easy crop to grow, but it was really hard to sell at the farmer's market. However, the bok choy was super easy to sell at the farmer's market, but we had a terrible problem with bugs. Can you give me better ideas on growing these crops next year or ways that I could engage the public with the crops that I had a problem with? And it would be able to get out of all of the world of information and give you um, a gardening therapy session, if you will, on <laughs> centrics on how you can help sell your kohlrabi as hell as help with your bugs, with your uh, bok choy in a way that's applicable. Um, and you can also ask it to, um, to compare different insecticides for bok choy that are natural and be able to have it kind of read aloud different things. And so it's, it's pretty incredible that you can get out of reading all of that information and having to compare and contrast for yourself that it can kind of reach all those different deep veins of Google and then put it in a place that's just text to text for you to, to talk to, like a secretary that you would walk into the kitchen and you'd say, hey, this is the information that I need this week. And it's five minutes instead of hours of back and forth. Yeah, um, we do have a couple of prompts. Uh, Mer Brown says um gardening cut flowers potentially ducks and chickens <clears throat> stasia says um or stasia sorry if i mispronounced that um says backyard gardener interested in selling produce at a local farmer's market next season which i think you nailed that with a kohlrabi comment 
uh, Stasia also said, I was skeptical as the onset of the web event, but um, I'm feeling sold on the concept by now. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So uh, for selling produce, uh, you guys that are going to be bring and, and cut flowers that are going to be bringing things from market who are just getting started, definitely come back for tomorrow as well. I'll run more prompts here in a second, specifically for cut flowers and chat GPT for you. But since I am screen sharing, I'm going to flip over to Discord really quick. And this is a tomorrow conversation, but I just want to show you the possibilities with text input for, uh, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to uh, Mid Journey. So Mid Journey is the subscription and Discord is the, the chat room, if you will. And we'll talk about all that tomorrow. But if you can remember back when we first had like MySpace and there was different rooms, <laughs> that's where we're back to now. But if you can give it a the same way I'm giving chat text prompts for the text input, you can get it for digital. So if you are running a sauce business, these are all images that you could put your own label on that I'm ho hovering over. I wanted to do community tea parties. And so these are some uh, computer tea party like uh, uh, that images that were done. I also asked it to uh, give me a gnome with carrots that were fresh being harvested. And these were these images. These are different posters that farmers could use where you could put in your own information there, as well as look at these beautiful images. And I'll just click on a couple of them. These are just images that you could use if you were doing a harvesting day or a planting day. And so you don't have to be a great photographer. You don't have to um, have all of these images for your farm already. You can give it the input and be able to have cut flower harvesting with people laughing and say, come to our cut flower harvesting party and have beautiful images to share using AI as well. So we'll talk about that in workshop tomorrow. Um, but since you guys brought up the cut flower, I just wanted you to see the possibility. And then we can take those images and give it to the AI and video, which we'll talk about tomorrow. And that literally makes videos or short commercials that you could use for a YouTube channel or even just building out your Instagram page for carrot recipes. And you don't have to film it yourself and you don't have to feed it the photos. It's incredible. And so for cut flowers, um, Let's say we just had a question. Um, do you have to pay for mid journey? I don't know for sure. And I know that I should, I'm sorry. I know that I paid for the premium, but I think that you might not have to. Mm -hmm. I think that I did so that I had, I had no watermarks and I was able to save my images. So I think that you might be able to play with it without it but you might have watermarked images, kind of how Canva does. I'm not, um, it was it was very affordable for me to download the AI and video and Discord and pay for both of the monthly fees. It was under $30. And so if you just wanted to try it even for one month, it, and then it would be a lot cheaper if you did a yearly rate, but it was like maybe 10 to 15 each. It wasn't yeah. much to play with, maybe $9.99 even for one of them. Yeah, so it says Midjourney no longer offers a free tier or a trial period to new users. You'll need an active subscription service, which is it ranges between ten, thirty, sixty, and one hundred and twenty dollars. So one hundred and twenty divided by twelve is ten. Yeah, one hundred and twenty dollars though. That's that's a lot. Well, I do it monthly. When I first started, I j just to play with it because I didn't want to invest $120 to saying if I liked it or if I didn't use it, yeah. the $10 a month seemed a lot safer. All righty. Do you see how fast that was? So here's all that I, I the input for who is running cut flowers. I said, can you give me a planting chart for growing cut flowers in the mid Midwest for year round cut flowers? So I was specific with the year round production. And so here, growing different blooms in different times, here's all the bulbs that it recommends for March through May, cool season, late season. Now I could ask it to give me mm. uh, 
Well, I'll just say edible information. I was going to try to say for specific season so that it didn't take. Okay, now do you see how because I wasn't specific when I backed up and I said just give me edible information? Do you see how all of a sudden now we have an avocado or blueberries that were not actually here in our cut flowers here? So I would have needed to be very, very specific with, I would like to know edible cut flowers that I can grow for season year. And I would have had to start over from that. And so I, if you guys start with the chat, if you um, don't get the input that you like, go back to that sheet that I had put over here, which I'll open it back up really quick again. And then take a look at the way that the prompts are specifically worded to say discuss the role of technology in improving crop yield and efficiency um because it's what you're wanting to give it what the information that you're wanting your end result because it's just grabbing information from everywhere however um let me go back i'm trying to find back where i was with you guys sorry maybe if i stop sharing it'll pop back up there we go So uh, just to go back to where we are today with chat GPT, that is completely free. They do have a paid version with chat that is available. I personally haven't, um, I haven't even, I haven't paid for that one yet. I haven't needed it. It is just uh, the free version that I've been working on for the inputs of the text. And I have been very, 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 very excited about it. Um, from a perspective of somebody who's wanting to grow cut flowers or who's wanting to have a backyard garden, you can ask it for specific plants and vegetables that you would want to grow. And then what is the bless, what is the best way to plant and grow those? You can ask it for community co-op ideas for ways to involve your neighbors. And so if there's any of those type of things that you would like me to have it and try to give it a prompt for you to see, I would um, I would love to talk about that because next I wanted to talk about uh, using the text prompts as branding. And so I don't really want to go too far into what we'll talk about in workshop two without really just covering the basics of the prompts from task automation or letter writing or the short stories for social media. Is there any other questions like that that you guys would like me just to feed it a prompt really quick that you might find useful for your business that you would, that you use to use like for engaging your audience specifically? Waiting for. Comments. Yeah, sure. I just wanted to make sure that I was, I just wanted to give you guys enough time to think. Because if there's a way that I can give it a prompt that would help you now, I would, I'd like to just feed it that. Let's see. Build out an elevated gardener's layout in a 30 by 30 space. Let's do that. Let's see what it gives me with that. And then. I just realized I was muted for a second. I'm not screen sharing right now. I need to turn that back on. I don't. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> oh, what is that block? So this is all of your summer spring spacing for fall. And it gives, it's a 30 by 30 square, basically, where you could print out and know your blocks. So this says, here's a simple planting chart for a 30 by 30 space. This chart assumes a square shaped garden with specific plants that are just examples. And so then this gives you your summer, your spring, your fall, your winter, what is going in which, and then here are your plants that go literally in those spaces. And then, of course, it recommends crop rotation. 
So your winter crops like wheat or anything, those things are going after, but you, you've you got the same north row, middle row. You've got all of your, so this is your your square for summer. This is your square for the other, sorry. It put them all together, but they're all in order, if that makes sense. So your north row, you've got a spring area, and then you've got a summer area, and then you've got a winter area. And it's the same row, but it already put your plants for you. And so this is what a farmer will try to do with their rows, where they're writing it all out and color coding it in Excel and trying to extend it and then show where the overlap is. They've already done it for you with every plant. Wow. What was another one that was asked? Um, uh, there, there weren't, there wasn't another question. Um, basically everyone is just, uh, amazed. <laughs> um, uh, Mer Brown says, I don't have any questions now. I downloaded the app and it's so awesome. So many possibilities. Uh, Stacia says, uh, maximizing the space. How do I get rid of squash bugs organically? All right. I'll ask that one soon as I get this. So I just asked it for some herb, like herbs and summer squash. And so the cool thing about this is all of these recipes. So if I had an abundance of squash, which everybody has in July, August, where we're just like, all right, fine, we're going to turn squash into candy. What else are we going to do with it? We're just, we're going to dry it into powder. Um, I can utilize these grilled squash, this recipe, and then go over and ask uh, the, the Discord here to give me an image. And then if I show you here, I used, I already found the reason I asked it for squash is because the other day you can see all these beautiful images of squash that I was already able to go pull. And I couldn't take a photo that would look that great with parsley and squash myself in the lighting with the camera or anything, but I'm able to now use that as a social media post saying, come get your roasted squash or come get squash for you to roast tonight at the community hub or wherever you are um, and utilizing those photos. And so um, I just wanted you guys to see that that's another thing there. Okay, what was I gonna put in here, Hannah? I'm getting rid of squash bugs. Yes, how to get rid of squash bugs organically. I know it goes so fast. It feels like my brain sometimes, guys. So I will scroll back up after she gets done just throwing all this information out. And the reason I do like uh, I do like being able to use it on my phone is because you can give it different voices. And so you can just have somebody in a wonderful, calming British voice read all this out loud to you. Oh, my goodness. And, so, and then you can just, and then you don't have, like, there's no button to push after you've already asked it a question. She'll just sit there and wait patiently for you to ask another question. And then you can just keep with your dialogue and all those questions that you're asking while it's in its verbal mode are all in text prompts. So if you are driving down the road and then you get to where you're going, you can have your hour and a half conversation already all logged for you and all the questions and all the theories that you wanted to come up with. So here you go. Here are your natural companion planting. So they're like, say they say radishes are great to repel. So I would plant radishes all underneath all of my squash plants just to see if that helped. And then you've got your, your DE, you've got neem. Come on, hand picking. Now she's just messing with us. You can get out there and hand pick them. Crop rotation, uh, essential oils. I would start with radishes and then I would use the the DE. I've had really good luck with DE myself. I did get ants off of loofahs with um, cayenne pepper though. So I haven't had a lot of luck with neem. No, neem seems to just be sticky and have to be reapplied a lot. Yeah. Mer Brown says, I'm definitely interested in the branding information. I don't currently have a business, but as we grow our little homestead, I'm trying to find ways to monetize what we can come up with, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. A branding pitch. Give me some more keywords. Backyard farm, backyard homestead. 
yeah homestead um growing produce to sustainability let's see if those keywords get us far enough more um just, this is my favorite part about it is when you're asking it to give you a pitch or a scenario because it'll paint a picture it'll say like imagine a cozy cabin with Russell like nested blankets and all this other and so um I'll go up here in a second but just wait until you see what you would already have ready for your website so this is now we're going to go into website design introduction Welcome to Harvest Haven, where we transform our backyard into a thriving oasis with sustainable practices and homegrown goodness. At Harvest Haven, we believe in the power of connecting our community through res responsible, earth-friendly practices. Our story. In the heart of our neighborhood, our neighborhood nestled amongst the trees and buzzing life, Harvest Haven is not just a small backyard homestead. It's a labor of love. Started by a group of passionate individuals who dreamed of a more sustainable community and community-centric lifestyle, we turned our backyard into a haven of fresh produce, thoughtful cultivation, and shared joy. Goes over your values, talks about your offerings, you offer fresh produce, maybe you want to offer a CSA, educational workshops, community events. Why choose your 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 brand? Here they, they talk about that you have local love, a greener tomorrow, and then even ends it with like a let's grow together. And so I can ask it to give me more or I can ask it specific things. Like I can say, instead of having the community involved, have this run by a mom and a pop or, but it, I mean, it can literally give you what you need for your website for great descriptors um, and have it already all spell checked and, 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 uh, and, in the right, uh, in the right mindset for who you're pitching it to. You can say, I'm pitching this to middle schoolers. I'm pitching this to rich CEOs that fly all over the country and it will, it will word it appropriately for the audience that you're, you're, you're trying to do. And so I can use the same script of organic gardening in that same paragraph. And I can say, tell me this for middle schoolers and tell me this for jet bound CEOs. And it'll give me a completely different letter. And I love that because I'm giving it the same information. And that same information is just being deciphered for the right type of individual. And so for social media post or for a pitch to a bank that you're trying to apply for something, being able to say, give me a really good scenario on why growing small gardens are better than big corporate farms and you would be able to craft an amazing letter in a matter of three minutes and then you uh, can make it your own that's the best part I'm not saying that you guys should copy and paste this 100% obviously you didn't want the name Harvest Haven but being able to go into your word document and do word replace and then add to the values and change in it's just going to save you so much time and give you a really great outline on how to set up and so even for stories for my kids, it gives the stories in a prompt with a beginning, a middle and an end, but it also gives it a main character and a villain and another. And so you can give it these different prompts to get the outcomes that you guys, you want. Uh, we have a, a lot of really good comments. <clears throat> uh, Mer says or asks, um, and this is a really good question. Are there any plagiarism, plagiarism, <laughs> plagiarism or copyright issues with this um or are there robots just happy to give us all this information that is a really good question so that is what everybody is freaking out about mer is there's not right now there isn't like you are not allowed to upload books according to amazon kdp and other places that have been used with ai without saying that it is ai and so if you were to say that me a children's story with this you would need to disclose now don't think that you can get away with saying that it's you and it's ai because ai is smart enough to say if i give it this feed and i say to chat and i type in this exact thing and i put this back into the message and i say did you write this she'll i'm sorry i personify everything she he it will say yes um it will say yes i wrote this and so college Kids have gotten in trouble for having it write their papers. But for me personally, I'm giving it inputs that I already know are, are real if I'm having it write something for me. For instance, if you guys know me, I own Eating the Ozarks. I'm a foraging educator. I'm an expert in the field of wild food. And so I can give it text inputs about a dandelion and say, 
the standalions from France. The standalion sailed across the ocean. The standalion uh, used to be used in food and medicine in these ways. The standalion has vitamins A, B, C, E, K, magnesium. Um, the root is super high in inulin. I want to talk about using it for gut bacteria, but I need to set in a scene for children. And so because I'm giving it information that I know is real and valuable, it's making the information that it's gathering and generating for me that much more me if that makes a lot of sense. And so if you are a massage therapist, if you are an incredible flower gardener, you're going to be able to give it intelligent information and then allow it to write and do all of the filler, all of those fun little words that just are catchy, like cozy and, and comforting. Um, it'll add that to your knowledge. And so for social media posts and stuff, I've been able to see it being able to help me expand upon my knowledge. Um, with the AI images, we'll talk about that uh, more tomorrow. There's a lot of artists that are concerned because you can be very specific with say Picasso and it can see that type of art and then use the art that you're telling it to in the same similar way, it can mirror. Um, I'm not the right person to argue with that because I am a creator myself and I don't believe that I have a right to owning an idea because all ideas are fluid and they all just kind of come through us. And so for me personally, I love open AI and I love giving information away because I personally, as my own human, feel that I was here to generate and expand knowledge. And if I do that, I don't need to own it. That's that's what our human species has done for millennia is figuring out who washes the better coconuts or grows a better grain. And so for me personally, I think that if I can create something and it would be used by AI for a lot of other people to benefit, I would be more than happy to share that with others, even if it means that I don't get to own that idea. I, it, that's just my own. And so people that are very, very big into ownership of ideas or creation probably should go research patents more and, and go down that rabbit hole than I, that I have. Um, but right now with AI, you do need to say that it is if you're using it in a book or in a published type of content. That's the only really restriction that I'm aware of at this point or trying to get away with it with college papers. I know that you can punch something that was generated in HI and ask it if it's AI, which is again, why I would suggest always making sure that you make it your own, but allowing it to, you, you guys, if I just scroll right back up really quick, you can see just on that one little bitty prompt of here's all I wrote was, can you create a branding pitch for a small backyard homestead growing produce connecting with sustainable practices? So all I wrote was that, and you guys can see, we've got an introduction, we've got a story, we have values, we have offerings. And so for me to try to come up with and think of our values and our offerings and all these different bullet points, that would have taken me hours to lay out. And instead, now I can go into the layout and edit it to make it my own. And so that's what I'm finding is so incredibly value from a business perspective of, I want to plan a class where I'm harvesting these eight different plants in a six week here, let's do that. So give me a... We do have a question. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Linda and Rich ask, um, seniors are interesting or seniors are interested at distribution site for me to compile a cookbook for one person for the vegetables received from urban farms. So I'm assuming, uh, Linda and Rich, that you're asking for like a CSA cookbook. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let, let, let me do that next. That that would be a really good. I'll show you really quick how easy that would be to do because I kind of touched on that when we were doing the the prompt. But here, um, a oop. I can't type right now. Harvest plants. Okay. So I'm asking it for a six week class for gardeners. 
this is what I found as somebody who puts together classes and plans and things like that all the time, that it would be an incredible savings that I, of time that I could give it specific inputs for what I wanted to harvest or which projects I wanted us to work on. And it can organize it logistically with activities. And so it'll give you an overview, gardening basics, what we're doing. Participants will grow their own herbs. What is their homework? nurturing. And so being able to have tasks or week one, week two, week three with a, with an activity, the more that I give it the activities, the closer I'm going to get to my class that I wanted without having to type it all up myself. So if I know that I want to focus on watermelons or squash bugs or whatever your focus is, being able to give it those inputs from the very beginning before it gives me this prompt is the way to go. And so with a CSA, if you, for instance, um, let's see, CSA, I don't even know if I want to say for seniors, let's just not, let's not even go into seniors yet. Let's just see what it gives me for. She froze up on me. Alrighty, so I don't remember whose name you said um, had asked about the recipes, but- Linda and Rich. Linda and Rich, okay, so if you guys, I'll, as soon as this finishes, and I told you, it'll just give you so many sometimes. So here, I just asked it for some versatile seasonal. So it gave me this stir fry. It gave me a quinoa salad with mixed veggies. So it was just being very, very broad. Now, if I say, give me recipes for onions specifically, then you're going to end up with a lot more narrowed down for your CSA. And the reason I'm showing you this is because if you just give it a broad, give me a bunch of CSA recipes, it doesn't really know what to grab. So if you're looking specifically for seniors or you guys, because of the way that your produce distribution is, you've got specific six different vegetables that came in that week. Within a matter of five minutes, you would be able to immediately generate all of the recipes that you could have with those vegetables that you had on hand. Um, now for that um, if you guys want me to show you, okay, Do, does anybody mind if I show you an image really quick on Discord, how fast it is on like say creamy mashed potatoes? Because I think that it kind of fits. Like we can go into images and all of the other tomorrow, but if I go over here. Does it provide the recipe as well? No, so this is just for So you pay for mid-journey via Discord? So Discord is the chat room where the images for mid-journey are saved. So it's a mid-journey bot in oh. Discord. Just Discord is just like the website that hosts the room for a lot of different gamers and everything from what I understand. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to find my image. Where am I? There we go. Okay, so I will go over all of this tomorrow. I don't want to lose you guys because we're just covering the chat GPT today for the text input because that's the most important thing to master because as soon as you figure out those inputs or how you're going to get it to give you the information, you can then take that information and put it into your business or into your other things that we'll cover tomorrow like these animated. Uh... So in these rooms, oh, there we go. So in these rooms, the reason you guys see all these images as I'm scrolling across is because a lot of people can use these different bots, if you will, all at the same time. So sometimes you see the most random images. I saw people saying German soldiers in World War II around a Christmas tree with a manger earlier. And I was like, I don't understand in gas masks, like what is going on? <laughs> Somebody's writing something, but you guys can see right here. All I typed in was imagine creamy mashed potatoes with uh, cream onions. And you guys can see, I've got a variety of three different images that I can pick. 
Um, if I pick, say, I like number one, that looks the most like that recipe. All I have to do now is I can, this image is already over here now in my images. If I go up and over here and now I can save that, we go all the way up to the top where I just generated. Oh, let me let it. There we go. So here's all my varieties of creamy mashed potatoes with onions. And so if I right click on this, you guys can see I can download this image or I can share this to social media. And so I can take this image with this creamed mashed potatoes right here with caramelized onions immediately. And within, I guess it took me a little bit more than two minutes because I was showing and moving around, but it wouldn't have probably taken more than two minutes to come up with a really great recipe for these mashed potatoes that I got to get somebody to buy at my farmer's market and be able to show them an enticing photo and say, come grab your potatoes and make this today. And so for, uh, for uh, you guys that are wanting the CSA cookbook, that would be a very easy way to have a start at the beginning of the season and then literally allow chat to give you 10 recipes for all of the produce in this, the winter, the early spring, the summer, and then the fall, and then put all those together and just generate the images and you would have a book uh, that you didn't have to write or come up with that you'd be able to share with your community. And that's the thing that I think is really cool is because if you're not selling it, or even if you're selling it for the printing, you're, you're utilizing information that's already out there that you could have copied and pasted or tried to rewrite recipes that you found on all recipes, but being able to use the variety of garden produce in ways that it can compile in a text to text without everybody's grandmother's story. And I'm not saying that I don't appreciate my food bloggers that tell me, it's really nice just getting a recipe without having to read through 15 text photos and, and, and blinking ads and shoe things. And I'm sure that that'll eventually come at some point. We'll have an ad here. But for right now, it's kind of how Craigslist is when it started out. And it's just text to text and plain. And it's it doesn't get um, overwhelming for my ADHD for sure to just get the, the information. Do we have any other questions or anything right now? Uh, not at the moment, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to submit in the chat. So I know that I talk, I've been talking a lot about recipes and I talked about social media posts, but from uh, the perspective of somebody who runs a small business, um, also look at it from marketing strategies or legal advice. And I don't say, I'm not saying don't go hire a lawyer if you really need one, but Besides content creation, I can ask it like, what are my, what could be, what could be constraints if I wanted to run an event at a new place and what all types of documentation is usually needed? What all do I need to start a new business? What all legally is required of me to run an event in a public venue um, in Missouri? And so I can, um, We want to do backyard garden to sell produce. I have a question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does ChatGPT have access to meteorology or um, like the farmer, the farmer's almanac in regards to um, how much precipitation would be happening in like May if you were to ask it? And, okay, and I, so, haven't, I haven't played with that yet. Um, if so, I wonder if um, if it would be accurate. Like how, do we know how accurate it would be? For weather planning? I'm not sure. We can, let me, let me ask. Um, so here for backyard gardening, it wanted me, it tells you about picking your starting small, worried about your regulations, that other. If you go into more specific for record keeping, like what types of records does a farmer need? And then it's going to give you an entire expanded bullet point on those. And so um, let's say, um, I'm trying to figure out what type of question to ask it as far as the farmer's almanac. Um, what type of a question would I be able to ask it to see if it could generate what is the uh, type of weather? What are the things of weather? Like what are the right weather conditions for planting, say, strawberries? 
Um, or are we going to have rain in, you know, in March or something like what, um, based on the weather in March, I mean, how does it know? I don't know. Let's ask. I haven't, <laughs> you're teaching me now, Hannah. I haven't asked. How does it, it how did, does it know where we are? Are your location services on for when you <laughs> submit questions? I don't know. I think we broke it. I think it's okay. Like, <laughs> like I don't what let me ask it again are we going to have rain in March in the Ozarks 2024 let's see I don't have access to real weather data oh well there you go there you go so you need to use a weather service so the answer on that one is no interesting so hmm. it's definitely data but again um create <laughs> we have a question uh from Mer brown ask what the 2024 farmers almanac predicts in usda zone 6b that is a brilliant question <clears throat> do you want me to say that again yep okay ask what the 2024 farmers almanac predicts in usda zone 6b All moon next. Nope. Yeah. How do you spell almanac? Am I brain? Oh, A L M A N A C. I see. I thought that it felt, I felt like there was an I. You guys don't judge me. There's an I inside. <laughs> so what is the 2024 almond uh, farmer almanac for zone? USDA zone 6B. 6B. I don't think. We'll ask. I don't think that it has since it said it didn't have weather data. It didn't like it. I'll give it again. So if it doesn't, okay. So if it doesn't have an answer, it'll like, like, I don't know. It's like, I don't, let's ask it again and see if she's like, ah. I'm sorry for the confusion. <laughs> she's like, we're not in that year yet. Oh, good. A at least it does refer to local agricultural extension services. That's good. That's it's it's directing people in the right direction. That's good. Yeah. So for branding, I think that it's it's cool for it to be able to give you a script for your business or for um, travel. So uh, this is off off business since you guys haven't asked me a question. Now you just have my ADHD going. But um, plan a trip to uh no 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 let's not no, let's not do new orleans let's do no let's just do missouri and and include farms so if you are wanting to see something specific on i don't know why it's i feel like it's i have too many things open because it was just running really fast a second ago. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to submit to the chat. Okay. So if I wanted to go see farms and I give it that input, this will actually give me trails or things specific to that. So if you are a business traveler and your company is flying you to California because you're going to a symposium, um, you could ask it to plan a trip in San Diego or in LA or somewhere specifically to go and find things that are exactly what you want. Besides just saying like the, give me a, a plan to go to New Orleans where it's going to say, go to Cafe du Monde and this other, you can say, find me places that are all historical buildings that are dated past 1800 to drive past. And it will be able to give you that information. Um, I think that this is incredible that it can give you all of the things to do in the afternoon, as well as the places to visit around, even in your town. So say you run a hotel and you, or you have an Airbnb and you want to be able to give people that are coming from out of town specific to their interest, 
um, ways to go around town and visit or the, the cool things to go do if they are into art or they're into food or they're into history. You can get itineraries specific to that and then be able to print those out in like a little binder for your guests to be able to sign in and say like, hey, into outdoors and hiking and biking. These are all of the things that you can do here in our area. Are you into fine dining? These are the restaurants that were written up on reviews and have very uh, recent information that you can share and be able to connect more people. And I think that that's the really cool thing about using the itinerary or the planning or the schedule or the what I just showed you guys with a week, uh, make a six week course. And so it can give you courses though for yourself. So uh, give, here, watch this. Give me a course in gardening, sorry, for. Ginger Miller <clears throat> says that the Google doc is not opening for some reason. Um, it's opening when I access it. Let me try again. Rachel, you have it um, accessible for all, right? Yes. I'm trying to think if I want, like for book recommendations, uh, books to read and Let's see if it'll give me, I'm trying to give it exactly specific for what I had to do for my kids. It didn't like that. Um, I gave them exact, I said I wanted five weeks with what they were going to read. And then I gave it the books. And so I was wondering if it would suggest books. Hey, Rachel. It does. Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you go back to your doodle doc? I will. Um, and is yes. It, sa it says it's shared with anyone with the link. Um, can you press copy link? And then can you put that in the chat and let's see if that, that will work better. In the zoom chat. I think we had this issue earlier. It wouldn't let me paste. Oh, that's it right. wouldn't let me paste into the. Hmm. Will it let me paste in the question and answer maybe? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely try that. Oh, it says, oh, I can't, it's not, a, it's, there's nowhere for me to paste in here. Oh, um, go to the Zoom, go to Zoom at the very bottom of your screen. Yeah. You're thinking that it, no, it's saying that there's no open questions. Can you oh. see it? No, I can't see it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, do you want me to try to send it to you again? Yeah. Yeah. Just paste it. No. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know, Ginger. And if not, you guys can send me your email and I can just add you each one by one. All right. Okay. All right, Hannah, you can try to figure that out while we're. All right, I just submitted it to the chat <clears throat> and it, I was able to open it for on my end. So I, let me know if that works for you guys. I'll Got wait. it, awesome, Perfect. yay. Perfect, good, good. And so I can add to that document later too. I've got a bunch of other notes too. So anything that we had in here too, or if any scenarios you guys wanted me to run, 
and copy and paste from this chat into there. I technically can. Um, so here's one of the things, all, all I asked it was, give me a course in gardening for five weeks with books to read and what to plant. And you guys can see that it gives you a breakout into which books and everything. And so down that rabbit hole, if you were a homeschooler, you could literally have it design a course over how to introduce electricity, how to start organic bug farm gardening, how to grow, uh, how to how to plant crops for honeybees and give me a course and books. And so just like your licensed therapist would go, okay, these are the things that you need and these are the books that you need to read. Um, the chat feature, if you have a specific issue with your business, you can ask it for book recommendations or for articles that would be specific to that. And so I think that that's really helpful as well. I um, was able to um, ask it. I have a friend who was dealing with some codependency issues. And so I was able to ask it about that. And then I had a friend who was wanting a chart for her business um, for she does reflexology and she was wanting like a nature trail and we were able to have it not only make a pitch but a weekly course where people could come and stretch and utilize say a trail for reflexology with activities and it was able to break out that whole plan and then we were able to add hers to it and so for you guys that are growing flowers and flower gardens um you would be able to have it work up projects with specific flowers from creating dyes with wildflowers, from creating teas with them. Um, you can really just expand on anything that you're already doing and then allow it to give you endless possibilities that you guys can kind of modify and make your own. I was trying to scroll here. Are there any other questions there, Hannah, or should I just uh, pull and start doing some other kind of scenarios? Um, I could have it compare and contrast things. I could have it create a script. Um, I could ask it to describe uh, for a visual, for a photo, for using the other, for using the Discord. Um, I've covered the travel itineraries, crafting letters, um, Trip planning, and I don't think that trip planning, again, is just if you're leaving somewhere. I think if you have somebody coming to visit your farm, you could really use that as a resource to that whole agro-tourism um, of things to do, as well as the content creation of activities for people to do on your farm with produce. Like, you can just, like, I have no idea of what to do with squash, but I could look up squash crafts and find things that people have done with squash, and I think that that's pretty cool. Printing. Lots of stamping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stamping. But, you know, like, are they growing seeds and whatever? I don't, I just think that uh, it, if I was just growing only roses, I would have it telling me, uh, like, uh, let's see, not describe. Um, tell me a story about roses and... And their benefits. And this is going to blow your mind. Now, tomorrow, you guys, I'm going to take this pitch and I'm going to plug it over into my AI and video. And we're actually going to play with picking the images that we want in each scene and we're going to make a movie together in about 15 minutes we can make three or four matter of fact if you guys who are here with us today want to write down your favorite like your your commercial for your backyard garden so flower gardener if you wanted to give me ideas for the parameters of your garden and what you would want to grow and then those market gardeners that have a backyard garden we could do two different side-by-side -side videos and you guys could have those on YouTube uh, by the end of the class just to play with, like with your name and everything. Um, pretty easy. So as you guys can see while I'm sitting here talking, uh, the story here with Rose, it's a once upon a time story um, about an herbalist and a healer. She fell ill with a cough that persisted 
And so basically the rose infused tea, which rose hips are extremely high in vitamin C, especially when steeped with the lid on, uh, like 40, 50 times what an orange could be in its dreams. And so um, having a story that's actually true about it would be, as you guys can see, if you had a rose and you wanted to go to an elementary school and tell them all about your roses and get their parents to want to go to your rose farm, you could easily depict a story about a rose like this. Or I can say, five. so instead of tell me a story, now I'm asking it to give me five social media posts specifically about roses and you're going to see a complete difference. So instead of a tell me a story, these are going to have hashtags. These are going to be short, concise blurbs. You can copy the one or two that you like and say, tell me this differently. And it'll give you another version of that same post. Um, but it'll even come up with little hashtags and things for you to be able to plug immediately into Instagram. So here's a post about ancient symbolism of roses. Here's one about the journey through time. And so that was just me picking out, but here we learned about that ancient Egyptians cultivated roses over 5,000 years ago. Bonus, cool. So we're touching into something and we're eating roses like the Egyptians did 5,000 years ago. And that could be an easy post. Um, I can immediately, tomorrow we'll show this, go over into Discord and talk about, I, I want ancient Egypt roses <laughs> rose water in a bath and be able to get an image for a post to like get images for each of these without having to go try to set up a scene and pick roses and make it look perfect. And so I think that the way of the future is definitely going to be AI. Um, I think it just makes sense. I want my doctor to be able to have access to all of the knowledge in the world with the push of a button. I want, I don't want that guy who, I, so I'm trusting the 26 year old doctor who just graduated from medical school, who just had to read like 17 books and pass the test. He knows all the world of information. No, but he probably has the most recent, but how about the 65 year old doctor? Who's like really good with his intuition and all the other, but he has no idea about the most modern practices. Cause he hasn't been in school in 40 years. Both of those guys should be using the same generated prescription theory system to go, what is the best thing for this person? Because they're both bouncing off the same. And so if you look at that from the business of gardening or farming or small scale anything, being able to have a, a text to text input of knowledge to build off of is incredibly important and, um, and useful to get started. Um, I think that we're going to get overrun with AI images and text that doesn't feel human. And so from my heart to your heart, I would be very careful with putting out information that looks like it's computer generated because people want human contact more than now, more than ever. And so by utilizing this to connect with people, make sure you're connecting with people. Make sure that you're not just generating and doing a copy and paste. Make sure you're putting the you inside of that blurb. And so instead of saying, did you know that roses have been a symbol of love for thousands of years? I would say, I love knowing that the, like that roses have been used for thousands of years. My family uses them for this and then this other. And so kind of how those bloggers are able to put their story in between all of their recipes, you're wanting to still add the you about your farm to the inner information that's being gathered. But I don't think that that's hard to do. I think that we are people. And so adding the people to uh, text automation um, is, is pretty natural for us. I do think that it's it's really easy to get lost in the text to quick text question. And so I before we were wrapping up here today, I want to drive home for sure that it's surveys, legal advice. You guys remember that planting chart that it was able to work up. So it's not just give me a social media post. This is really applicable into saving you hundreds of hours of time into side-by-side -side comparison or planting charts or things like that as well that can just take out and you can, the closer to the plants that you know you wanna grow, like say loofahs, and you put that in the question for your planting chart, the less moving around you'll even have to do to the outputs. You'll get the information that you're wanting it by being very specific. Um, and so giving it, the parameters, if you will, just like we do with kids, if you give it the parameters, it'll, it'll, it'll seem to be more obedient for you than just a very, very broad scope. So we do have a question. Um, Karen Zimmerman asked, 
uh, does this not show the source of the results? Uh, like with a story, what keeps someone from copying that whole story and publishing that under their own name? I suppose with AI, somebody else could, I mean, that's a really hard question, uh, Karen, because I wrote, I, I have a book and I argued a lot of with, with Bo when we were back and forth on when is it your knowledge versus somebody else's? So I have a photographic memory and I can read 13 books and then I have that knowledge. And so I can write a book of that knowledge because I gained it from something else. And so what AI is doing is it's giving you the text information from all of these other sources that it was able to read and then compile. And so if you were to write a book, say I was to post a book uh, that I had AI like that once upon a time with a rose. AI would definitely be able to say that I wrote it. So it would, you would know that I didn't personally write it. But beyond that, anybody could technically take any storybook and try to rewrite it or make it their own. And so there isn't any legalities with using AI. And so that's one of the things with like authors or things that are concerned that if they put in the story of say the rose into there and it was their story, that then it's already out there. But I think that they already are. I think that we already, by publishing anything, we're already giving that information away. With every social media post that I post, I'm giving that knowledge away. And so having it compiled, I don't think is dangerous. I think the credit where credit is due is coming from the original source or the original book. It wouldn't be coming from AI. I, hope, I don't know if that answered your question, but there definitely isn't a... Uh, there isn't any rule that somebody couldn't, but nobody has access to your chat either. So you can't see my chat here on Roses with the inputs that I've given it like you could on Discord. On Discord, you can see the images and there are no rules with sharing or using an image. So if I create an image on Discord and I have it in my images over here, for instance, let me move over to my screen share. Let me go to my images. I have a... Uh, a thing called Atlantis that I've wanted to do where it is for community gardens. Because I gave it the parameters of the plants that I wanted alongside a river, it was able to generate this image of the herbs that I gave it to beside a river. It also was able to generate this image of those same herbs next to a river. Now these, see, I, you can see my input here. I wrote Pangea covered in wild animal plants, set in the Ozarks with a river and mountains covered with burdock, burdock dandelion, monarda, and wildflowers. So I was specific with some that I wanted to see and without others. So this image, anybody who is on mid-journey can technically take this and they can publish that. But I don't, I'm not scared because I didn't make that image. So because it's an auto-generated, I'm not worried if somebody else is producing a calendar and I'm able to use it on my social media post because I'm not looking at it from a revenue perspective. I'm looking at it from a energy shared versus education given perspective. I don't mind if anybody else out in the world was able to utilize an image that I used on social media to share a concept or so. Now, if okay. I wanted this to be my brand and that's my image, then I would need to copyright it. I would need to pay a real artist so that I could own that image because as it is now, you can't own a stock image or an AI image. And so if you're really worried about specific, say branding, like my logo, Eating the Ozarks, that's mine. I own it. I had a specific artist make it. It's not owned by AI. Does that make sense? Here we go. I, I'll give it another input since I did the create a post. Um, so I just asked chat I think it had timed out on me. Sorry, guys. When it does that, when it doesn't start thinking, it's just because I've clicked over from one screen to the other. And you know how Google wants a refresh? It didn't know that I was active in it. There we go. 
And so it should always have that little white at the end or immediately start reading. So what I just asked it to do was to give me a lecture on. And so I've used this to explain theories to myself um, about th concepts that I didn't already understand. And so if I wanted to go walk into a college classroom and get a lecture on something specifically, I can ask it that and say how, oh, hey. Which app? The whole Zoom? Was it only for an hour? I don't know. Should we try to? I don't know if you guys are on with me still. Hannah said that her app closed. I still see myself on the screen. <laughs> okay. She's going to hop back on with us. Let's see if uh, let's see if she if she hops on. So um, all the way back up here to the top. Okay, so here's the beginning of where I asked it to give me a lecture on growing flowers in a backyard setting. And so this is the lecture. So it'll say it'll start you out with even how you're going to talk to people. So say you're about to go be on stage and somebody's asking you about your business, you can say, write me a lecture on this, and this is what I would like to talk about. And so while I just gave it a specific on a backyard setting, you could give it a full um, five or six sentences about what you do for your business so that it incorporates very uh, little, like lots of little details and very specific things to your business so that it doesn't look as, uh, as animated this way. Um, but it'll give you a good morning. It'll give you a, uh, a, one, two, what you're doing, all of your, your planting and all of the other, like your companion planting, all of your things that you do for your gardening. Now, the way that that's really, really cool is that if you were about to go into a meeting and somebody's going to be asking you about your business, you can also say, can you give me question and answers of questions that might be asked during an interview for blah, blah, blah. And so you can run scenarios like that as well. And so I think that those were others that I hadn't shown yet um, as far as, so social media post inputs, um, employee reviews, companion planting, giving you an exact charts, giving you breakdowns. This doesn't just have to be, I know we've done a lot of, because we, I'm, this is a Springfield Community Gardens and I figured there would be a lot of flower farmers and gardeners. I've kind of stayed specific to vegetables and other, but if you were, doing a workout regimen and you wanted to harvest a plant every day out on a hike, you could have it write you up a, a six week class to doing that and um, be able to really connect the ideas that you didn't come up with yourself from an activity and then be able to tie in your own, your own things to it, which is a really big time saver. Let's see. I'm not sure if you guys are on because I am just here in the chat. So let me try to go back over to my Zoom. Is anybody else still in here with me? I see. Oh, okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, I'm not sure. Hannah got kicked out and she was... Um, reading for me. So I'm going to try to go over here and make sure I have all the questions. I'm back. Yay. Okay. I'm reading Karen's things really quick. Yes. Okay. So she said the difference from the creative juice from the storyteller. So for sure, if I changed this, that prompt uh, from a backyard setting to a wide open field with two acres or whatever the parameters that I'm going to give it, it's going to give a whole different scenario. And so um, the task automation is great as long as you're giving it the parameters that you want or else you'll just get lost down the generation rabbit hole of just generating the information and not having it uh, the, the hyper specific. And so the more specific that you can give it, the better. Um, but also 
just get in and first, like just play with it. Just open, like what I did was I opened my refrigerator and I was like, okay, I have salmon and I have mayonnaise and I have kale and I have arugula. What can I do with this? And letting it just give me information is kind of how I got started in figuring out the the way that it could help me um, with just the random things that were around the house. And so I said, give me a schedule for my kids. Uh, we wake up at 6 a.m. They need to feed the dogs. They need to brush their teeth. They need to, Denver starts the car in the morning, 10 minutes before we leave. So at 7.10, wow. we start the car. Um, I work out from 8 to 8.45. I have a 15 minute break at 9 to 10. I have social media where I answer emails. <clears throat> I pick up the kids at 2.45. In the time frame that I have available, can you tell me where I could do a two hour class on this? And it would look at my schedule and my whole day and it will work up a schedule. Not only it'll tell me where the schedule and it can set alarms for me to remind me on him going and starting the car now that it's winter 10 minutes before we leave. But it can tell me I have these four hours available where that two hour window would fit. And so that's where it's really cool. So if you have a farming schedule with seven employees, you can give it. I have four employees. These are their names. These are what they do every day for me. I need them to only work five hours a day. Can you give me an overlapping schedule where they're all at the farm for no less than two hours at a time? And it will literally break out that schedule in a side by side for you. And so better than human on that side, because not only is it in a five minute task, it's looking at the times and everything and there's not a human error with the overlap and so then you can plug in all the other fun things but being able to talk out loud with schedules or give it inputs like that is incredible so with the alarms does it set the alarms on your iphone if uh if you pay for the the chat premium it can not only do that, it can set calendar reminders from you. It can send emails. You can even have it generate the emails automatically for you. Like I said, I haven't done that because I'm a control freak. I don't want anything going automatic yet, but uh, you can. You you can with the other, you can have it um, even respond to social media press messages with automatic prompts for you. Karen asks, uh, where is this program where do we download it? What's the subscription cost? Um, we did get that information. Um, it's ChatGPT is free, but MidJourney is what you have to subscribe to pay for. Is that correct? Yes. And so uh, today, the only thing that we're we've really covered besides me showing you a few images um, is ChatGPT. That is completely free. They do. Um, they have a premium subscription. I don't have it. The premium subscription is the one that I was telling you about. We'll set email reminders and things like that for you. But right now, just for everything that you've seen today from these prompts, all I am at is if you can see my website still, it's just at chat.openai.com. That is chat GPT. That's the server. Um, it's just a text to text with yourself. And so uh, if you don't have a premium version, you don't save the old past messages from what I understand. Those go away. If it's still an open conversation, like for instance, if you have texting on your phone and you're texting with somebody and no matter how long you've been texting, as long as you don't swipe over and delete that message, you've got all that text feed. That's how chat operates. So as long as that window is still open, if I X out of that window though, it's kind of like swiping and hitting delete and then you would lose the information. And so I think if you pay for the premium, you might not, but again, I don't pay for it. So because I've been able to interact with this one without needing the premium, I didn't worry about it. For the Discord that we'll talk about tomorrow, you can do the, you can still generate all the images. You do not have to pay for it. If you want to download them without a watermark across the top or on it, that's when you would need to pay for it. So I personally, because I want to do children's books and calendars and other things. And if I don't have the cost up front of hundreds of dollars per image for a book. I don't mind if those images are reproduced by anybody because I'm getting the knowledge and the stories out there. And that's my main goal. My main goal is not uh, 
only the capitalistic side of making money off of every single book. If it's smaller amounts and I can charge a whole lot less because they're AI images, I'm down for that. I would even do them electronically for free if the knowledge got out there because there's a lot of ways to make money in advertising and sidebars and other things without charging for education, which is my whole little rant over here, soapbox over. Uh, I, I'm a big library person too. And so um, I think for chat GPT today, just download the app, play on it, uh, ask it to develop a crop plan, ask it to do a schedule for you, ask it to tell you a story, ask it to develop some recipes and just kind of play around with it. And then tomorrow when we meet back here, I will go over the basics of Discord. I will talk about mid-journey and I will talk about um, AI and video. There's other ways for you to edit and do. And so anything that we can go into farther to help you guys, I will. Um, I found Adobe Express, which I have here pulled up. There's a free version of it that you can kind of edit. Um, I haven't yet paid for the premium just so that we could play on it tomorrow. I will eventually pay for the premium because I like it better than I like Canva. Um, but it basically, you can take an image that I developed here in Discord that it gave me a four. I can take it over here. And with the photos, so I want to do a syrup. I want to do a syrup at Old Wilderness Canyon. We're going to tap a whole bunch of trees. And I want to talk about black walnut syrup, sycamore syrup, hickory syrup, um, I want to even talk about infusing syrups with, uh, say, boiling the maple down with juniper berries and other things. And so I generated this image to show a bunch of different types of syrups set in a forest setting. And so I could easily, with the AI Adobe Express, take my logo then and have it folded and bended and put it on this bottle. And so um, we'll get into all of those types of things for branding tomorrow, but I just wanted to show you besides saying the squash photo on how that might be able to help your business um, with, there were even people who do shirts. So here, if I, before we hang out, just to show you about. I have a question. <clears throat> in regards to the Adobe Express, um, when you download images from the Mid Journey, do you have an option of JPEG versus PDF versus PNG? I think that you can save them however you want to save them on oh, okay. if you're downloading them. So they, they provide different file formats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you see right here with this like un, like a ultra realistic uh, blank Gildan shirt mock-up for Etsy. So you you could put your logo on any one of these and utilize this image with your brand for your website without needing to go photograph the black shirt. Wow. And you can do different mock-ups and so you can see the different. And so if you like one or the other, mm -hmm. and so that's the that's another, which we'll talk about tomorrow. So when I'm saying branding, it's not just see like these hot sauce bottles, you can put your own brand on different bottles and have it set up where there's shading or different lighting on different counters. Meaning you don't have to hire like a designer or a stylist in order 100%. to- hundred percent. And so a lot of people are worried about that, but honestly, the human, the human isn't going to get, we're, we're still going to know when something's handmade. We're going to know when something was us versus the other, but things being automated as far as using a stock image for my sauce bottles or doing, I just don't see the point in spending thousands of dollars or even somebody else's energy on something that's already been created. If it's yeah. been created, why not utilize what's already been created and then let's move forward. Like we should have flying planes by now. Stop taking pictures of sauce bottles. We got plenty of images of it. You know, if we can utilize it to get the the, the point across. Mer Brown says that she's going to start tapping for syrup. Yay. Well, so uh, tomorrow we can uh, we can even play with scenarios. Um, you can have it write you social media prompts for syrup tapping. Um, tapping. No, let's see. Two P's. Yeah, two P's, but syrup. Um, Tapping. Group event. 
to make it uh, to make it um, a community event. It had me timed out. I think I've done that every time I've come back in and out. So if you guys are just leave it the way, it's just because I've gone out of the window into another. Oh my God. This is what, this is what my brain just has died for though. Like seriously. So I would have already come up with like, okay, we're going to do, a, we're, we're going to do a guided tree tapping. We're going to do a contest on who's going to do whatever, like who's going to challenge who harvested the most syrup or whatever you could do interactive, a pancake breakfast buffet. We were already talking about doing that where everybody can do breakfast side by side. Educational set stations, set up informational stations about the science behind building flow. Like it's just a, a basic a brain dump of everything that you could want to do with syrup from arts and crafts to nature hikes. And then you can have it expand on any one. Like give me more examples of maple, maple inspired cooking demos. So here. She wants me to do it again. Maybe. You guys are just watching me sit here and fumble. Yeah. There we go. She says no. This does not want to play with me right now. I wonder if it's because I ended it with a parenthesis, let me, or a semicolon. It might've been because there was a semicolon. I wonder if that's like a block. Yeah, yeah, I bet it is. Like a don't, don't respond, like I'm done. It's like a thumbs up in text or something. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So I asked it to give me that. Let's go all the way down. There we go. More examples. Absolutely. Okay. So here are more examples of oh. maple inspired cooking demos. So now wow. this is other things that you could do with maple besides your syrup. So now you've got a vinaigrette that you can make. You can maybe roast vegetables. Maybe you do maple walnut. And so these are ideas that would have taken me an hour or more to Google and search all recipes and read reviews from different bloggers and figure out which ones we wanted to do that called for maple syrup. If I had just typed in maple syrup recipes, even in all recipes, it would have taken me a lot longer to try to come up with exact ideas for using maple in something. So I can ask it now to give me the recipes for each of these. Maple poached fruit. Oh. And it should just go right there into now, boom, maple vinaigrette, all the directions. And so it first, it just gives you a broad overview of what it is. And then you can literally say, now I need you to expand on this. And I want all of the recipes written out with directions. And now if you're a maple syrup farmer and you are going to run a maple syrup tapping event, you now have, how many is this? Five incredible unique recipes to share with people who show up to your tapping event, whether you do it electronically or not, you don't even have to use paper. You could literally have all of these, even via QR code. I could upload every single one of these into Google Drive and then put that on a QR code that you could walk up and just with your phone, snap the QR code. And then all of those recipes that just opens on Google Drive for you. And so you guys could just share and say, interested in maple recipes, take a photo of this QR code right here at my booth. Interested in black walnut, do the same. Um, maple pecan granola. I can go over here to Discord and then ask it for maple pecan granola and get a beautiful image for that to use for my social media post to get people to come to my event. And I can do all of that in my loungewear, which I love. So I think that you guys in your own lives from recipe creation to 
crop planning to figuring out how to schedule your kids or your dogs or your trainer. I think that it's incredible and it's a really, really great resource. Um, I hope that today I was able to really like give you guys a broad brush and a few little hyper details. Definitely go back to some of those prompts that I wrote out in uh, the Google Drive for gardeners or farmers specific. And then um, the very top page one, if you're not a farmer and you're not a gardener, I gave the prompts for tell me a story of or compare and contrast just to kind of remind you guys of specific prompts because it really gives you a completely different world of information. If you just wrote in organic gardening or tell me a story about organic gardening or compare and contrast organic gardening to conventional, the information that you would get is so dramatically different that I think that those are very important little bitty little bitty changes will give you guys so much more. And so play with each of them until you figure out which is your favorite for real. Um, I look forward to the creation of stories and posts that are informative of other people's brilliant minds of feeding AI their own brilliance and seeing what they can create. I think that that's going to be really cool. The amount of sharing that we're going to see in 2024 as people discover ways to connect this way without it being time intensive and it really just being community driven because how can you own something that can't be owned and so you got to give it away and then imagine if we were all just giving away so much information and so much resources and being able to generate business without that like without that need of of capital to get somebody to your home or your residence or to your community party I think that's pretty cool so brilliant yay so thank you guys very, very much. Do we have any other questions before we end today? And then uh, tomorrow will be the same time, 10. And then I'll start with the basics of Discord and then we'll look at images on Midjourney and then we can turn it into a movie together. Uh, we don't have any questions. We just have a lot of comments saying that uh, folks are really inspired and that this is really awesome and people did have used it back in the day. Oh, I tell you, I can't even imagine how how many lives it would have transformed if we would have had this already. But I'm really glad that we're able to experience it now. And um, like you said, for even therapy sessions or anything, being able to work out schedules uh, is it's, it's really, really cool from, I, I think from the perspective of somebody who I, uh, from a homeschooler or a business owner or somebody who's worked with gardeners, like you said, for developing recipes and recipe books, it's just really endless without having to go to Google and read every single personal story. And that's, I think, another thing that I would like to drive home with the shortness and the, the conciseness of it is that it's just concise information that you can just use the way you wanted it to without flash ads and without 15 other personal stories. If you weren't talking to me here, <laughs> it would have just been text to text. And so thank you very, very much for you guys that were joined in and were able to figure this out. I know Hannah's got a survey. Uh, those surveys are really important. They justify uh, not just me being able to be brought to you by the USDA and um, other networks to be able to teach. Uh, they are used as justifications for more community programming like this one. So if you benefit from getting free resources like this from them, the that is the justification that they need to be able to providing it for you. Yep. Please, uh, please fill out the survey so that we can provide more of these workshops. And then uh, we will see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m., um, Hannah, did you share the survey or is there anything else? Yeah, the survey, I shared the survey at the beginning. Um, I can share the survey again. Give me one moment. Yeah, I'm really excited to see um, the results next tomorrow. Yeah, and if anybody would like me to work on a video specifically for you, I am 100% game to give it the inputs for photos that we would like and then to turn those ideas into a video. Um, we can use it to, to give us a prompt. So, uh, Ginger, I saw you were here. So, uh, I, we could ask it, say for conservation programs, uh, to show conservation programs being used for removing invasive plants from conservation areas by community driven efforts and show kids in hiking trails with shovels, removing things. And so it's, it's really unlimited with the, the images that it's able to pull. Mm -hmm. 
And they're not just the still images that I was showing you. They're motion video of B-roll that just exists out in the world of the cat walking across grass or whatever. And so you use a bunch of B-roll and add your own story to it. And it's it's pretty cool. So we'll we'll work on that tomorrow. So I linked uh, the evaluation for today's workshop, and I also linked the um, YouTube for our um, where this will be posted later. Um, I saw that there was somebody who um, joined the webinar uh, halfway through. So in order to watch this full webinar, uh, feel free to use that link in a day or two whenever it gets uploaded. All right. And thanks so much. Thanks, Rachel. I'll see you tomorrow. All righty. We'll see you guys. Thank you for joining me. Bye.